Hey everybody! Welcome to today's video on 6th edition Tyranids. Today we're talking about pyrovores and if we have time, biovores. First, I'm going to have a little caveat. Reserve. Let's do a, res a review of the reserve rules because I use them a lot and I found that a lot of people don't understand them. Reserve allows you to place up to half of your army into reserve, voluntary reserve, okay, at the start of the game. Half the units in your army into voluntary reserve at the start of the game. Now, to my understanding, units with infiltration, outflank, and deep strike do not count towards this number because if they did it would be pretty silly if you could never have an all infiltrating army or an all deep striking army at that point so we're talking about regular units that don't have any special rules that allow them to come in from reserve this is important because when I was playtesting the Biovore and the Pyrovore, I set them up in reserve. And this is a key point, which I've been making throughout the entire Tyranid series that I've been making. And people don't understand it. Use reserve. Don't walk across the table. Now, you take your units that make tunnels, like the Turvagon, um, and he makes a tunnel. Now, after he makes that tunnel, you can bring in your reserve units through that tunnel, as long as they're infantry, no monstrous creatures. This is important. Because when people criticize the pyrovore and the biovore and things like that, they're not, they're just small, small, small thinking. Tiny, tiny. If I could get my fingers, you see, can you see it? You can't, between them, that's the thinking of the player who can't understand this basic concept. Put them in reserve. Make your tunnels. Bring those reserve units through those tunnels later in the game. It's really a very simple concept. My pyrovores and biovores do not walk across the table. They have no need to walk across the table. They're going to pop out of a tunnel at a later date, at a later turn, and then they're going to shoot things. Okay? So now... If you can understand that, ha ha ha, the light bulbs, they start going off. Boom, wow, I start seeing tactics, tactics that are more in-depth and more involved than how do I make an invulnerable hive, flying hive, tyrant creature thingy and fly it across the table and eat everything in its path. <sighs> Let's kick it up a notch, people. Let's make the game a little more challenging, a little more intellectual, a little more tactical, a little more strategic thought. That's what Games Workshop wants to do. That's what I support. That's what good players like. So, you make your tunnel. You pop out a biovore. Not a biovore, a pyrovore. They cost 40 points. You can take them in units of three. Now imagine this tunnel. They pop out on turn two or turn three. Three pyrovores. Basically with heavy flamers. Because they're strength five and a very important AP4. A template weapon. And they just blast away, man. The... It's great. I like it. This is also how I bring my um, 
Tyranid Prime. I mean, yeah, my Tyranid Prime squad into the game. And my Tyranid Warriors into the game. You can join it with a whole squad of ten of them. Put them in reserve. Create a tunnel. Bring them in. It's a simple concept. They don't walk across the table. They will appear on the enemy side of the table on turn two or turn three. Almost guaranteed. There is no chance to shoot them. There are no ordnance blasts. There are no killer, monster, cheesy, beardy, independent character who will do nasty things to them on turn one because everybody seems to argue to me that my entire army is going to be killed on turn one. Everything is going to die on turn one. Apparently, everything that I can think of will be killed magically on turn one. All my lictors will be dead on turn one. All my gene stealers will be shot to pieces on turn one or turn two. Everything's going to die. I am getting really tired of hearing this explanation for why Tyranids are not playable. So people start coming up with something more original. I keep my units in reserve. I create the tunnels. I have deep strikers. I have outflankers. They arrive on the table later. If I want them to arrive quickly, I take a comms relay upgrade to a bastion or an Aegis defense line in my lower point games because there is no game so low in points that you can't take an Aegis defense line. And then I reroll failed reserve. If I really, really, really want them to come in on turn two, I take a Swarm Lord, which gives me plus one to my rolls. Now, I guarantee you, only the most unlucky Tyranid guy is not coming in with that combination. Sometimes I might even want extra turns, and I don't take either of them. Maybe I want them to come in on turn three. Maybe I want them to come in on turn four. And in that case... I need a few extra turns to get the, the tunnels made or to get my lictors in place or to walk in on the side of the table and they have to sit there for a turn before the pheromone trail ability pops on. And you know what? This video is going to turn into a reserve rule video. It's not going to be on the Pyro 4 or, or, or the Bio 4. Here's how it works, okay? Keep your stuff in reserve. Bring them in later, deep strike them later, outflank them later. They appear where you want on the other side of the table, depending on how fast you want to do it. If you need two or three turns to really set up your awe-inspiring killing blow so that on your enemy to crush them, don't take comms relay. You'll probably have a few units staggered over turn two, turn three, and possibly even turn four. That just gives you more time to set up tunnels and to move the lictors around. If you really want them in immediately, like I do, comms relay. So, they pop in. Okay? Anything that comes in on reserve can use a tunnel entrance instead of its normal reserve deployment. It's very clear. You want spore mines? They come out of the tunnel. You want uh, uh, um, lictors? They come out of the tunnel. I mean, they basically have to be infantry. Anything in uh, uh, Ravners? Possibly. I think beasts can come out of the tunnel. Um, I'm sure somebody will correct me on that if they can't. That's how you use it. That's how I get my models all the way across the table. Your table can be 20 feet long. I'm coming on it at the other end of it in turn two. Deal with it. Most people can't. Most people find out the very hard way that they can't. 
Uh, usually it's going to be uh, a warlord or somebody just getting creamed. Um, but yeah, it, I don't I don't know how many times I've explained this in the last two weeks to people. Um, it's just such an obvious tactic for the Tyranid army. It's just screaming on every page of the book that I can see, and yet I'm seemingly the only person who sees this, and I don't know why. Yes, I'm a little bit more emotional in this video because I'm just tired of hearing it. So please, I'm going to put a big, big captions around this. Read my reserve rule overview. Before criticizing Tyranids any more. Or gene stealers, or lictors, or brood lords, or warriors, or quite honestly, uh, uh, people are criticizing virtually everything except for their favorite monstrous creature. Watch this. For Tyranid players, learn it. It is the core tactic of your army. You do not need to walk across the table. Pop in on reserve, please. Deep strike them. If you're walking across the table, my friends, this is the reaction. This is the face. This is the face when I see Tyranid players walking across the table. Okay, so next time, Pyrovore, Byrovore, hope you understand now how to use them. And I will look forward to explaining to you how to kill your enemies and enjoy it. Victory is mine. See you next time.